Good morning once again. It's a wonderful Friday for Sabawat Isa and today is July the 10th and we welcome you once again on our bread and breakfast. And so today I will be with you, Pastor Marikar, and to share with you on the last chapter of the book of Malachi. And here we come to the end of this chapter of the prophet Malachi. And we see that even up to the end of this chapter, and it's the end of the Old Testament book, is we see the battle cry of God for His people. It's it's a four short chapters, but it's filled with with rebukes, with filled with the truth, but it's also filled with the heart and the endearment of God to His people. And we see that God Himself has spoken to His people to reveal His heart and how He felt for the people of Israel and we we begin to realize how God really loves his people even in the facts and even in their unfaithfulness God never gave up on them and he continued to speak and he repeated himself even to the last chapter of Malachi we see that this is God revealing his heart and his great love to his people and still at the end he had this final call before he went silent for 400 years and that he didn't speak and spoke to his people but before that happened even till the end God has spoken that his people will really understand and see this great passion of God for them in here the people of Israel turn away from God once again and return to their wicked ways but then God Seeing how the people are continually being destroyed and walking in the path of destruction as they flee away, as they run away from God, as they walk away from His righteousness, God here once again reminds them that they have to return. They have to turn away from their wicked ways and return in God's righteousness. So our topic for today is the last call to return. And this is the heart of God for His people. Why do we have to return? God knows that without Him, without us clinging and staying in the very presence of God, there will be no place for men. There will be nowhere else could go but to destruction. And in here, it says here, why do we have to return? It's because surely the day is coming. Because surely there will be a time of judgment, a time of reckoning, when God is going to judge us according to how we have lived our lives in His purpose and His glory. And it says, this day is going to come. It is inevitable and it will surely come. And even in our time today, now what God is speaking in these very words is that there will be a time when Christ himself will return, when the second coming of Christ will return. And this will be the greatest judgment for all the people where, where everyone will stand before God and they will be judged. But even in our time today, before this day comes, we are already in the time of the last days and there is always judgment in our time. And that the judgment is really very important for us to understand because this will be the time where our future, our destiny will be decided. And God said, surely, surely this day will come. And when this day will come, what will happen? What is going to happen when the judgment of God will come in, in this earth? The Lord says in verse 1, which is the first point, Surely the arrogant will perish. Now let us look unto this. Sabi po dito in verse 1, Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace 
all the arrogant and every evil doer will be stubble and the day that is coming will set them on fire says the Lord Almighty not a root or a branch will be left to them and in here we see that the first thing we need to understand when the day of God will come surely the arrogant will be burned it will be like a burning furnace so in here we see that the fire of God will come to consume those who have been unrighteous and arrogant before him and this is the truth and this is the reality and the future of those who have gone against God and who are these arrogant people we see in chapters 1 to chapter 3 we have a lot of kinds that we say God is referring to in this arrogance and in in and in here we see in chapter 3 who are these arrogant people there are those people in verse in chapter 3 verse 13 they are the people who have spoken arrogantly against God and they mock God and they say what and they say you have said it is futile to serve God what do we gain by carrying out his requirements and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty but now we call the arrogant blessed certainly evil doers prosper and even when they put God to the test they get away with it and in here the first people that we say this are arrogant before God these are the people who do not trust in the sovereignty of God and they feel like God will not judge and God will will not punish those who did evil and in here they, they think that God has no distinction God does not put distinction between the righteous and the evil doers and so that they continue and they begin to walk in unrighteousness and left the very righteousness of God because they don't believe in in the righteousness of God and in here some also who are the arrogant people they are also the priests or the servants of God who have profaned the offerings of God and who has think that serving God is a burden and what is it for them to serve God it's like a heavy burden for them to carry and they don't think that God sees what they're doing that God is the rewarder of their of their of their works and also here God spell spoke of those who have profaned and mocked God through the through their marriage and they have not honored God through the relationship that they have entered into they have not honored God through the marriage covenant that they have entered to and they have taken for granted the wives of the youth and that they have profaned the name of God even as a priest no even if they supposed to stand as the revealers of truth as the speakers of truth for the people but then they have tolerated the wickedness of men they there are also these people who have walked and stood and lived in injustice and these are the arrogant people that God is referring to that in the day of judgment they will be like a stubble and what is this stubble because the stubble is the thing that you know it's not so important and whenever during the time of harvest this stubble will be thrown away and it will be put into the fire and it will be burned why because it has no it has no importance at all and it's easy it's so weak it's so meaningless that it's so easy for it to be caught on fire and to be burned and to be perished and see, this is the same thing that God is saying that when the arrogant will come and face the judgment you know everything that they have worked for everything that they built you know, no matter how they think they have lived in abundance in their wealth they think they are prospering through their wickedness no they think god does not see because they continue to prosper on what they do but in here the lord says there will be a time of reckoning there will be a time when they will be judged and all the things that they do everything that they have worked for everything will be put in vain and it will 
perish and will be destroyed together with them and that there is nothing that will remain in their lives but you know and there's nowhere they can go but to destruction and to burn in the fire and you see here that there are two kinds of fire that you now there is this fire that really will come in the day of judgment but in the for the righteous it will be a refiner's fire you know because the righteous will not be burned but for the evildoers and for those who did not stand in the righteousness of god they will be burned and they will be no more okay and the worst thing it says you know, it says here, the Lord, it is the Lord Almighty who says these words, that not a root, as you continue to read in chapter 1, not a root or a branch will be left to them. That means everything. They will be totally destroyed and they will perish everything and every, everything in them and the, everything that belongs in them. That means there will be no hope for them. There will be no future to them. They will not flourish. No matter how they, they work so hard, no matter what they have acquired here on earth, there will be no future. And it will not, they will not prosper at the end. And this is a reminder for each one of us that when we walk arrogantly before God and we don't honor God in everything that we do we feel like we can stand on our own we can stand alone we feel like God you know I know what I'm doing God you don't have to meddle on my affairs because I know everything you know I I I have my own will I have my own ability to think and I can have my own judgment and then we forsake God because we think, you know, God doesn't have a say. God doesn't care. God will not punish our evil doings anyway. And even when we make good things and good decisions in our lives, we feel like God will not reward us and God does not see. And this is the arrogance of men. But again, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to remind everyone that God resisted the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. We may think that everything that we do, it is going well, despite not walking in God's righteousness or forsaking the covenant of God like the people of Israel during this time. But God is reminding them. You know, when God sees them, he was really, you know, he was really so sad and he was really so hurt because he knows that everything that these people are working for, it is for their destruction. You know, there may be times when we think like, you know, God is so patient, God is so gracious that he don't mind me doing this evil work at this point of time. But you know God, what? When you find yourself in that position, you feel like, you know, everything is doing okay despite you walking in your wickedness. You know, this is the time of God's grace. And God is giving you grace that you will begin to see Him once again and return to Him. And this is what God is saying. This is the last call that He is giving to us to turn away from our evil works and to turn to him and to walk in his righteousness why because in verse 2 and this is the second point only the righteous will be preserved on the day of God's judgment as we face before him it says in verse 2 but for you who revere my name it means for for you who have walked in my righteousness, for you who have honored my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its race. And you will go out and frolic like well-fed cows. Then you will trample on the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty. And this is the promise of God to his righteous people even if the wicked people thinks like God has forgotten his people but to those who remains to those who have faith 
till the end, the word of God says only they will be saved. And this is what verse 2 is saying. Those who revere the name of God, those who honor God in their lives, those who choose to walk in faithfulness, those who choose to walk in the righteousness of God, even if and despite that the word is already walking astray, even if the majority has chosen to walk in the works and the ways of the world, these people who revered God, they choose to be patient they choose to stand on their ground and be faithful to the calling that they have to be faithful to the lord their god the lord says the son of god the son of righteousness will come and rise with healing in its race and the god's salvation will come upon them you see how the bible and the Prophet Malachi used the word son and we know that son is a very strong, you know, force that we know that the son brings life. Without the son, there'll be no life here on earth. It's the sun that brings light in the darkness of the world. There is no light greater than the sun. And so that this is how the sun of righteousness will come. It will come in its power. It will come in its might. And most especially, it will come in its righteousness to bring healing to, that is raised. You know, where, when the sun arises, there's nothing, you know. There's no darkness that can overcome it. It will bring light no matter no matter what darkness that we are in. And we see here that whenever its lights come, it will bring righteousness. It will bring um it, it will bring life. And that is is the same with the son of righteousness of God. When you see in chapter 2, are these people, you know, are these people really faithful? Are these people they were really perfect but you know we may think that in chapter 2 it's not easy you know to be perfect it's not easy to 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 perfectly walk in the righteousness of god because as a man we are imperfect yes because these people in chapter 2 they are not the ones that really has faithfully walked in the perfect will of God but these are the people who has the heart of repentance these are the people who return to God these are the people who begin to see God and recognize God in their lives that in the day of judgment because of their repentance because of their contrite heart God will come to rescue them though their righteousness is not complete but the son of righteousness will come to complete this righteousness that makes them righteous it is the son of righteousness that will cover them that will purify them and that will make them qualified and worthy for the salvation that God has prepared for them and this is how powerful the son of righteousness is and what is the son of righteousness I believe this is Jesus himself he is the son of righteousness that came here on earth enveloped us covered us with his blood covered us with his righteousness that whatever evil or wickedness that we have it has been taken away when we have received christ in our lives that we no longer walk in our own righteousness not in our self-righteousness we no longer have to work so hard to be righteous but it is the righteousness of christ that flows through us from within to out, outside, it is the righteousness that reigns in our lives. That's why we can walk in His righteousness. That's why we can make right choices in our life. That's why we can speak in with kindness. We can refrain or we can turn away from wickedness. It is because of the power and the might of the Son of Righteousness in our lives. He will arise and heals us. He will arise and take away all our sickness, all the things that's supposed to be experienced by us because of our sins. And that through this, it says in verse 2, you will go out. The righteous, 
those who revere God will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. And this is the result when the righteousness of God shines through us. And it says here, we will go out. It means we shall have the freedom. We shall have the freedom to make right choices. Freedom to follow God in our lives. And we are no longer bound by the powers of the darkness here on earth. We are no longer enslaved by the wickedness of the world. But in here we shall go out in freedom and frolic like well-fed calves. That means we shall be satisfied. We will no longer live in a life that is filled with emptiness, filled with with and satisfaction and unfulfillment and sadness but the Lord says when the son of righteousness will come and heal us we will like well-fed cows with filled with joy filled with vitality filled with strength spiritual and physical strength that in here we we will grow and mature and this is the promise of God and you know this is what God can do to us not just in the time of judgment but even today right now when we desire for the son of righteousness to transform us and to change us we can have this kind of life a life of freedom freedom living in abundance freedom living in prosperity and joy and satisfaction and the third and in verse 3 it says then you will trample on the wicked and they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty. And this is the greatest thing, you know, that God promised us on the day of His judgment. He is going to raise us up to overcome our challenges, to give us victory in every battles that we have. Why? Because God Himself has fought our battles. All we have to do is to walk and follow Him and we shall trample the enemy in our lives. What is our enemy? This is the wickedness of the world. This is poverty. Our enemy is our depression. The enemy, you know, even the things that we desire so much of the world that is from the world and not from God, we shall trample it down. Even our addictions, even, you know, our unrestrained desire of the things of the world, we shall trample it down and we shall overcome it and we will be proclaimed victors over these wicked things in our lives. Whatever struggle that we have, whatever difficulties that we are in, the Lord says in the day of judgment, we shall be preserved. Though the wicked people they will perish they will be burned because of their wrongdoings but as we walk in the righteousness of God as we repent before God God will come into our rescue and he will save us on this day of judgment and now how could we really respond to this call this final call God is telling us to return how could we really fully return in the presence of God, in the righteousness of God, so that in the time of judgment, we can be preserved. And now, this is the third point. We turn and renew our covenant with God. And in here, verse 4 says, Remember the law. And in here, in the whole book of Malachi, we have seen why the people of Israel has brought judgment to themselves and the, the wrath of God is over them. It is because the people of Israel, they have broken covenant with God. You know, God is a God of covenant. Whatever covenant that he had given with Abraham, it is the same covenant that he carried even until this time of Malachi, even in our time today. You know, he doesn't break promises he doesn't break his covenant but it always takes two people to make a covenant amen it not only one okay it takes God and man to make a covenant work in here God has been faithful we see that even at the end of the book 
of the Old Testament, God remained faithful. That's why he had this kind of battle cry. But in here in the book of Malachi, God rebuked his people because they have broken their faith and broken their covenant. What are these covenants that they've broken? They, they have broken covenant through their blemish sacrifices. They have broken covenant in chapter two, in chapter two through their marriages that has been broken through divorce they have broken also their covenant through in through injustice and lastly they have broken covenant by withholding their tithes and offering to god but today god says return and renew our covenant with him and what is this covenant now, verse 4 says, Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I have given him, I have gave him at Horeb for all Israel. And so in here, in point 3, letter A, is that we need to return in the Mosaic Covenant. Return to the covenant of God in the time of Moses. Now, what does this mean? In the time of the Israelites, they have walked in their own ways, in the ways of their neighboring countries, and they, they have adopted their laws and their patterns and their principles because they have married wives, you know, from their neighboring countries that is different from their faith. But then God is telling to them, you need to return to the laws of Moses. You have to once again remember and recall what I have given you. And, and God gave them the Ten Commandments. But because of their unrighteousness, they have turned away from these Ten Commandments. That's why they have walked in their wicked ways. But the Lord says they need to remember once again the laws that God has given them in the time of Moses and the covenant that they had in the time of Moses. And what is this covenant? Even in our t time today, I believe that this is the covenant of renewal because in the time when God gave the covenant to Abraham, it was passed down to Isaac and passed down to Jacob. But after the time of Jacob, the people of Israel went into slavery in Egypt for 400 years. But God still remembered his people and his covenant. And he once again renewed his covenant to his people, the people of Israel, through the covenant that he had in the time of Moses. After 400 years, God renewed his covenant to his people through Moses. And he says that if you walk in my ways, you will be my people and a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And this is the covenant of God to them. God renewed his covenant with his people. And this is what God is also saying to us and to the time of Israel. We need to renew our covenant. Remember when God renewed his covenant in the time of Mount Sinai. He has remembered us and renewed his covenant with us because he wants us to have this salvation and this reconciled life with him is the same is true in our time today we need to renew our covenant to god renew our faith to god renew our commitment to the lord that we can become his people a people that is called by his own name a people that will be preserved by him a royal priesthood to have this this honor to have this glory with him and to be a holy nation a people of righteousness, a people of holiness. We have to return, renew our covenant with God and return to the Mosaic law. And this is the renewal of the covenant. And that we need to take this chance. God is a God of second chances. Take this time as you hear this last call. God wants us to renew our commitment to Him and remember Him and return to Him. And the last sub-point under point 3 in verse 5, 
the Lord says, See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you. Before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes, he will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. The last point is return our hearts completely to God. Return our hearts to God. How can we be saved when the day of God comes? We have to return our hearts to our fathers. Turn our hearts to our parents. But before that, we can only do that when we return our hearts to God. Amen. When we be reconciled to the Lord and totally commit our hearts to the Lord. It means commit ourselves wholly to the Lord in this in our even our time today and the lord said see he has sent the prophet elijah this is during their time in the old testament he has sent the prophet elijah to reconcile god to man and man to god but in our time today we in the new testament god sent the prophet the john, john the baptist to reconcile the people in the new testament to God himself but eventually in our time today we have Jesus the spirit of Elijah through Jesus when Jesus came here on earth it was his ministry to reconcile man to God through his death and resurrection through his words through his preachings through his ministry God showed us that this is his love for his people he has sent away men do not know how to return even for you today even for us we may have not known how to return to god even as you listen to this word you want to return to god but you don't know but here i tell you we can do it through his son jesus christ God gave His Son, Jesus Christ, sacrificed His Son, so that through His Son, through the death and through the life of His Son, we can be reconciled back to Him. And that through Him, we can return to Him. That whoever believes in Christ, whoever receives Him, He will be reconciled to God our Father Himself. And in here it says, it's only there and then when the hearts of the children return to their parents, that blessing will come. That the, this, that the land will be blessed and will not be stricken by destruction. And this is how God will preserve us in the time of judgment. Even in our time today, we need to understand the why the land is cursed we see we're living in a time and in a place where there is hostility there is so much wickedness it is because there is so many hearts that has not returned to god because there's so many hearts that has not returned to god there's so many hearts that has been broken there's so many relationship that has been broken there's so many parents right now, they are abandoning their children. They have abandoned their responsibility and calling to their children. And also the children is rebelling against their parents. That's why today there's a lot of crimes. Why? Because there's a lot of broken relationships. The young generations today, even in our time, they are rebelling against their parents rebelling against the authorities of the land who are the ones the enemy are using right now to bring chaos it's the young generation it is the young generation the generation that has been hurt the young generation that has been forsaken and so they are rebelling before god and before men but today brothers and sisters the lord says only when we return that the land will be blessed. The land will have peace and rest. That's why we need to understand the importance of us returning our hearts to God. Because it's only when we return our hearts to God that we can return our hearts to our parents. 
that we can have a reconciliation, that we can have forgiveness, that we can aspire for love. We can live in a peaceful life filled with love. No, there will no longer be unsatisfaction. There will no longer be unful unfulfilled needs so that they will go out in the world. But when the love of God, when satisfaction starts in the family, we believe that there will be a good future and a hope for this nation. There will be good future for the land. But the Lord in here says, we have to return. Turn our hearts to our parents. Turn our hearts to God. And this is the very ministry of 611 Church. This is to reconcile. This is what we are called for. As a church, first is the church. The church must return their hearts to God. And when the church returns their heart to God and be reconciled, we can rise up to minister to families, to youths, to parents who doesn't know how to reconcile with their children. It's the church. Church is the key. We have to understand this returning our hearts to God so that we can also minister to families. And once the families be reconciled, we see a great light of hope for this nation. And that God will come in His grace and His faithfulness and He will not strike the land with total destruction. Brothers and sisters, if you are listening and hearing me right now, this is the final call. God is calling you to respond to His call right now, to return to Him, to walk in His ways, turn away from your wicked ways, and to once again be reconciled with God and receive the blessing of this reconciliation. Brothers and sisters, come in God's presence and He will return to you. And when He returns to you, He will preserve you. He will protect you. Even in this time of COVID crisis, God can make miracles happen in your life only if you respond to the call. And today I am calling you. If you want to have this kind of life, to be protected, to be preserved, to be saved, today and in the time of judgment, it's, there is only one way. Return your heart to God. By how? By receiving Jesus in your life. And you can be reconciled with God. Today, I want to lead you in prayer. If you want to return to your God right now and to have this promise and the life that is filled with blessing in your life, no longer living in the difficulties and unsatisfaction, but living with vitality and strength and satisfaction in your life. Today, I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you that you never gave up on us. No matter how unfaithful we are, God, you are still here. Even until the end, you gave us this final call to remind us of your love, remind us of your sincerity, Father, towards us. Today, God, we want to enter in this kind of life that you have promised in Malachi. Father, I pray right now, I want to respond to your call. Change my life. Turn me away, Father, from my wickedness. I want to walk in your perfect will. Lead me, God, and may your Son of Righteousness come and heal me, transform me, God, and may it purify me, Father, to take away all my wickedness. The beginning today, I can walk in, in freedom, Lord, and make right choices by following you in my life. Father, I thank you. God, I pray that may you continue to give us a humble heart. Give us, God, the ears to hear your call, to hear your voice right now. 
that as you call us, Father, we will not harden our hearts, but we are willing to repent. We are willing to turn away from our wicked ways and to follow you. God, I pray that you anoint us and may the way of the Son of Righteousness, God, overtake us and overcome, Lord, the darkness in our lives that today we can respond to your call and we can turn to you and return to you wholeheartedly. Take full control of my life. Take full control of my whole being. Father, lead me to your righteousness and that God may your blessings come upon us all, Father, today. Lord, I bless everyone who has responded to your call as they are willing to walk with you, to follow you. God, I pray that may you shower your blessings upon them. Write your names, God, in the book of life and remember them to eternity, God, that even when the time of judgment comes, Father, we shall all be preserved. Father, I thank you. Give us a wonderful day today and may your blessings overflow in each one of us. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And so that is Malachi chapter 4. And I hope that God was able to speak in your life. In the beginning today, you will desire for His voice and desire to walk in His ways and in His teachings that you, my brother and sister, you will accomplish what He has purposed you to do and that you will have the benefits and the reward that God has prepared for you. God bless and see you once again next week. We encourage you to keep posted on our videos, especially in our bread and breakfast and our live streaming in our Thursday, Thursday Jam. Let us grow together. Even if we are still in quarantine, I know that God is not limited by the four corners of our houses. God can come into your house, into your home, will reside with you and transform you each and every day. So I hope that you will keep posted on our Facebook page, 6 on 1 Bread of Life Manila, and also subscribe and like our YouTube channel, which is also 6 and 1 Bread of Life Manila. Thank you.